Welcome to Adobe Think Tank. I'm Jeff Barrett in what is, well, better than any apartment I could afford in Manhattan. <laughs> With me is Chris Duffy, head of AI Innovation and Strategy for Adobe Creative Cloud. Chris, thanks for joining. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, first yeah. interview of the day. Um, so let's get right into it. Talk to me a little bit about you know, how AI is going to change creativity over sure. the next 10 yeah. years. You know, the, the deep, big questions. Yeah, right. Right. yeah. and they are, they are some really fascinating questions. We're coming off of the Think Tank yeah. by Adobe yeah. yesterday can be viewed. And there's a course. lot of different insights you were getting. And it was really interesting. I think collectively we all agreed on the power and the possibilities with AI, but yeah. within that there's a broad spectrum of even what is AI and the capabilities of AI, specifically. Right. Ranging from the mundane yeah. to, you know, the scary, terrifying yeah. Westworld. Stuff, right? <laughs> and what I think we all agreed on is the highest order is customer experience. And underneath that is this notion of human and machine are stronger together than either alone. So when we go at kind of that quest to build this ultimate kind of uh, customer experience, if, that, if you have that framework of human and machine together is uh, really fascinating. And they were driving home a lot that the introduction to AI is going to be at a kind of a base level. A, you know, a first introduction that there has to be kind of a specific project for an organization. Maybe talk a little bit about you know, companies who aren't using AI, how sure. they can kind of break in first. Yeah. You know, I think that the first uh, step is what is AI? And it can sure. be defined into three seg general segments, narrow AI, yeah. general AI, and super AI, <laughs> kind of super intelligence, the, the Westworld scenario. Right. Today, there's only narrow AI, and narrow doesn't do AI justice. Sure. In the terms, in the, the term that it's uh, task focused, we kind of use it yeah. as a catch-all, exactly. Right? But yeah. we have to kind of narrow that <laughs> down. And like super AI sounds like something that you get at a like a at a BP. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Like if you have a Land Rover, you can only get yeah. super yeah. AI. Yeah, you can. Uh, yeah. So uh, in terms of creativity, I think it's a really exciting moment in time for creatives and. Uh, designers in the sense that if you look at what's happening in the digital market space, this need to create the experience economy has sure. never been more profound, I think, than uh, in the, the history of marketing, really. So now we've got this tool where we can marry the artfulness of creativity with the logic of science, and we bring those two together. So human creativity with kind of uh, this computational intelligence yeah. and create some really uh, magical experience. Talk to me a little bit about, because you had a recent blog post talking about how AI can foster collaboration. Yeah. Like what, what can you do with work teams that you couldn't previously do before sure. AI? You know, I think a, a great first step is to define the role of the human yeah. and the, the machine, in this case the creative. And you can look at it in three ways. One the machine and the human can be on an assistant level, right? So the machine can assist the creative in getting the grunt work, in search, in uh, other capabilities. The next layer up is the, the creative collaborator, and we're doing some really exciting things on the Adobe front where it's being suggestive and uh, predictive, and the highest order is almost a manager level where it can be there to set some rules and it can now learn from your habits over time and create kind of these guardrails and flag those areas where you might be deviating out of brand guidelines or deviating out of in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, out of uh, what well, and you talk a lot about man plus machine because AI really is limited on what you program it to do, yep. what you what you intend for it to do. Sure. Um, talk a little bit about how uh, the human behind AI can best kind of direct that. Yeah. You know, uh, we, we brought this up yesterday in the sense that technology is neither bad nor good. It's right. really a reflection of, of the, the human yeah, that's kind of creating point. it. And so uh, quite often you have to consider these biases that are inherent um, into the system as well. So we've chatted a lot about that. Yeah, whether or not AI contributes to bias yeah. or alleviates bias. I think we, really came, we came to a, a collective conclusion that it's a reflection of yeah. the, the humans that are using it. If you have humans yeah. with bias, yeah. your AI will have bias. It's just a reflection. If not, yeah. um, 
And yeah, that's the, the theory that if you have people with bias, you're assuming that the AI will take yeah. it away. But again, those are the people programming it. Yeah. So you almost have to have like a, you have to have an AI for an AI to like yeah. <laughs> police the AI. Exactly. <laughs> but back to your question, where yeah. to start? I think that's kind of where a lot of the, the questions in here at the conference, uh, a number of talks are going to be uh, speaking yeah. about that as well. And we we came to the conclusion that the best places is starting with the business strategy. What is the business yes. problem? Identifying that AI is of service to the overall Not business. assuming we have to use AI, now let's find a reason. Exactly. Let's find our reason yeah. and then we'll go yeah. use it. Um, no, that makes complete yeah. sense. Honestly, where, where, do you, where do you see... The, the other thing that I thought was really interesting is Basically, you guys were talking about by 2020, you'll start seeing the next blockbuster happening because yeah. of AI. Yeah. And I love to, you know, I love to hate on blockbuster because <laughs> it's an easy target and they don't exist anymore. But um, is, are there any specific industries that really need to be yeah, catching sure. up faster? Yeah, uh, the 2020, we had a couple 2020 stats. Yeah. Uh, another one. Was one yeah. An another one that uh, prediction that st stood out was by 2020, if an organization is not using AI, they will lose marketplace uh, yeah. competitive advantage. So, you know, the and that need might even and, be kind yeah. of tame. I mean, <laughs> yeah, exactly. you can really almost see that happening now yeah. to some extent. So to, to your uh, question about uh, what companies are kind of going to pop up yeah. by 2020, it's almost this paradox where the startups and the new organizations that can build from the ground up have some sort of a uh, leg up on yeah. some of the traditional legacy brands. You can almost level a playing field. Right? Exactly. So, you know, I think uh, it's a really fascinating time within the, the business well, market. I'd like to think like um, going with your gut versus going with your gut plus insights is always going to win out, yeah. right? Um, but you still... And that brings up an interesting notion that we touched on as well is how can you embed emotion into right. this very... Because AI is not perfect. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, you look at what's self-driving, like it's still not going to figure out where a pothole is yet. But so, the, I mean, there's still pitfalls yeah. there. Yeah. So that's why you need that. But um, being intentional about where you're taking your AI. So there's this notion of IQ and EQ. Yes. This really uh, fascinating intersection. I think there was some debate on can you infuse emotion uh, from a technical standpoint into an AI model? Mm -hmm. But we, we agreed on that the output of an AI model can provide emotion and right. empathy, specifically empathy. And then back to your earlier point about in industries that can really be transformative yeah. in this uh, new AI revolution, healthcare obviously is uh, you know really ripe opportunity. From you know telemedicine from to, the systems to the diagnostics. Exactly, yeah. uh, Zipline in Africa is now delivering medication to uh, remote areas yeah. uh, via. Uh, autonomous AI driven drones, so really profoundly exciting. Time. Yeah, I was in Cincinnati the, yeah. or, earlier last week and they were using it to just specifically uh, deal with like small diagnosis. Yeah. You know, the kind of stuff, nothing nothing crazy. Yeah. It's not like you're gonna, you know, be house and you're gonna <laughs> say, well, this is definitely not lupus. With sure. It. But, you know, small things to kind of gear toward another thing so that you can maybe save cost. Exactly. Provide efficiency. And that gets back to the assistant, right? So in that case, right. it's a medical assistant yep. uh, bringing it back to create creativity. You know, the, the opportunities are endless. We were, we were chatting the other day. The, the only limitation of AI is human imagination at this point. So. Right. <laughs> Which is a deep thought. You know, That's, I, but I love, so I love like both the practical use of AI and the deep thought. So getting just to kind of close out on deep thought, yeah. um, does a world where, you know, there's empathy and AI, I mean, where, where do you see that world yeah. going? And does that, does that excite you? Yeah. Does that give you pause? Does, yeah. Maybe, How do you think about it, it all? Maybe to define the end, we can define it by using an example from the start. So around uh, the age of two, yeah. infants have this moment called the other mind, this realization where their parents or someone close to them have different thoughts 
or emotions other than themselves. And I think uh, the creative community, humanity, is going through this similar moment in time where we realize that there's this other intelligence out there that we can leverage to uh, create more creative experiences, yeah. to have more emotional experiences. So. It's a fun and wild yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. Well, thanks for joining yeah, us. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. Thanks for everybody joining us in my new apartment. Yeah. <laughs>